to this week's how to. I am going to show you how I make meringues. I have been doing quite a lot of baking recently and I needed um, just to use yolks and I thought, do you know what? With the egg whites, I'm going to share with you how I make meringues. So I have been making meringues for many, many, many years. My grandmother taught my mother, who taught me. So I always think of the pair of them when I am um, making, making meringues. I love meringues. I think there is nothing yummier than a meringue with a sort of slightly gooey center. Just delicious. So in this bowl here, and I just kept them in the fridge. Now, do you know that you can freeze eggs? You can freeze eggs without the shell and you can freeze just egg whites. So, um, you know, if I didn't use these, I could have frozen them, but I've actually just covered them in some cling film and popped them in the fridge. So I have got four egg whites in here. You've got to ensure that you haven't got any yolk when you are making meringues, not even a little hint. So I've just got my four egg whites, which I'm going to pop straight into my Kenwood bowl. Um, if you don't have Kenwood, you can use um, a hand uh, a hand electric whisk or something similar. Don't attempt to make meringues without um, an electric whisk of some sort. So my four egg whites are in there. I'm going to put the lid down and I'm going to turn this up to quite a high speed and get them really, really fluffy before I add in my sugar. So I'm gonna do that now. And... That is how you want your egg whites to look before you add in any sugar. So that has taken about four minutes to get to that point and that is exactly what you want before you add anything else in. Now for the sugar. I find the easiest way to do this is to work out how many egg whites I've got. So if I've got two egg whites it would be four ounces of sugar. If I've got three egg whites it would be six ounces of sugar. I've got four egg whites so it's eight ounces of sugar. So that is how I do it. Now I know that some people weigh their eggs and then add in the equivalent amount of sugar, but actually I don't, I don't do it that way. And it's, it's personal preference and I have been taught <laughs> all my life to do it this way. So I just stick with what's familiar. So that in um, grams is 225 grams of sugar. And I use caster sugar and I use white caster sugar. And again, it's personal preference. My grandmother was a stickler for meringues being white. And if they weren't white, there was something wrong with them in her book. So again, that's always something that has stuck in my mind. Meringues, white sugar. So I've got um, eight ounces, 225 grams of sugar. My eggs are well whisked. And I am going to add in the sugar really slowly. This is the secret, I believe, in a good meringue, is slowly, slowly add the sugar in. You do not want to put it in in one go. A spoonful at a time. And mum would say, go off and do a job. Put your spoonful in, go off and do something. So whether you're emptying the dishwasher or clearing away, just go and do everything. So I probably has about at least 30 seconds to a minute between each spoonful. So enough waffle, we're just going to get going. So I'm going to turn it on and carefully add in a spoon at a time. Turn it up, go and do something. I've added in all of my sugar. I 
and just... No, 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 girls. There's no need for barking. I'm just going to scrape. Girls, girls! Hang on. Bear with. What is it? Sorry about that. Probably set all of your dogs off as well. I'm just going to scrape down the sides like that. Um, and just give it a quick whiz to make sure that all the sugar is incorporated in. Right, and you want it looking, <laughs> looking like this. Let's just get that off there as best we can. Right, you probably saw in the time lapse, I'm just getting the Arga trays ready. Um, I have got a piping bag. This is an old piping bag. I have had it for many years. And a, um, what do I call it? <laughs> a piping nozzle. And I've, I like to use that sort of shape end, but again, it's personal preference. So I'm just gonna slide that in to my piping bag. Actually, my piping bag could do with a little bit of a trim. Hang on. And just trim off those wispy ends. Not the best. Sharper scissors. Right. There. So my nozzle is sticking out. I then am going to turn. So I'm holding the nozzle in my hand. I'm turning the piping bag out over my hand and opening up that as much as I can. And we're going to fill our piping bag. This is the easiest way I have found to fill a piping bag. Um, and you just want to push in your egg white and sugar down in to that nozzle um, as best you possibly can. hardest bit I find is filling the piping bag and then just move your hand up so there's a bit more space and add in more like so. Now I have got, I wouldn't normally do four egg whites but because I've got them I am doing them but this is going to make a lot of meringues. So I've got two trays at the ready. And this, I may have to get a second piping bag out because am I going to get you all in? I don't know that I am. Let's try. This could end up being a bit messy. Then <laughs> fold carefully your piping bag over and give it a good shake down I'm just going to squeeze that down into that to make space and just give it a bit of a, a bit of a shake gather up well, this is a very full piping bag like so you don't want anything squirting out at the top squeeze that down and then securely twist the end of your piping bag and squeeze until you can see the egg white coming out of the end. Right, you are ready to go. So I am using Baco Glide in my Arga pans because it's reusable. But if you don't have Baker Glide, then greaseproof paper or baking paper works really well. I am going to, I will bring you up close to show you um, piping. Let's go down in this corner. I'm making smallish individual ones. 
So I'm just squeezing the piping bag with my right hand and holding my left hand very firmly on the top. Now they're not going to spread out, so you can get them quite close together. Um, and I'm just doing them like that. And it's practice when it comes to piping. It is just practice. do some little mini ones in spaces because we all love a little mini meringue. Left are the hopes I'm clinging on. Right, that tray is full. And in comes my second tray. Now something really important to remember as well is your egg white goes a little bit funny if it's sat waiting. So once you've whisked your egg whites you want and added your sugar in, you want to get it into the piping bag swiftly. You don't want to um, chat to a friend on the phone or go off and do something. You want to just crack on get it into the piping bag and get it piped. Now, the reason why I squidged as much into this piping bag as I could is because if I'd left it in the bowl and used a second piping bag after I had used this one, they would have gone a little bit funny. It, it doesn't like sitting and waiting, so it's better to use one piping bag and just crack on is my advice. There we're done and I've got very sticky hands. I'm just gonna wash those quickly before they go in the oven. Right, I have got my two trays ready to go into the oven. Now I'm using my Arga and I am using my simmering oven of my Arga. You want to cook meringues on a really low temperature. So 90 degrees C if you are using um, an electric oven and that's fan assisted um but yes i'm using my simmering oven of my alga i've obviously got two trays so i'm going to rotate them after about 20 minutes and check them i've got um so i'm not going to put them on the floor of my alga i'm going to have them slightly raised up and then the other tray above and and swap So in, there you go. This is for you, Arga users. Very dirty, I can't seem to get it clean. Um, and actually it doesn't matter, but I've got my plain cold sheet at the ready and that I will slide in at the top of my Arga if I feel that there is too much heat coming from above and I don't want my meringues to brown. I may or may not need it, but I've got it out at ready. And in fact, I shouldn't leave it up there because you want it to be cold when you use it. I've actually just been making croissants, so I've been using this for them. Um, Maud is tinkering around. Maud, you can't go and lie down, darling. Bless her. She's getting very, very old. Um, so yes, now some people add in vanilla extracts, some people add in um, 
salt, some people add in corn flour. Yes, maybe if you're making a pavlova, but just for regular meringues, like I've just shown you, I don't add anything, just sugar and egg whites. And that is that. So it's very, very simple. And it's a great way of using up egg whites. The other wonderful thing about meringues is they, they last for a long time. So you can store them in an airtight container and they will last for up to a couple of weeks, which is brilliant. So you can kind of get ahead. And that's why actually I don't mind making um, quite a big quantity, two trays full, because I know that they will get used. And there's little mini ones I absolutely love. Little perks. Maud, darling, do you want to come and say hello? Oh, here she is. Oh, and uh, we've got everybody else as well. Dear little Maudie. Anyway, I'm going to wash up. And then I will check on my rounds in 20 minutes and see whether we need to swap the oven, the tr oven trays around. Hey, Molly. Dear girl. Dear girl. The meringues have been in the Arga for about 40 minutes, so I thought we'd get them out and have a look and see how they're doing. So after 20 minutes, I swapped them round. I didn't think I needed to share that bit with you. But let's have a look. So when you can lift them up, and I know that they're not quite ready because I can see, but when you can lift them off the paper, um, they're done. These, I reckon, are probably going to need another 30 minutes. So back in they go. My grandmother wouldn't be thrilled with some of these, which are just beginning to discolour. That is the negative of using an auger, is it's very difficult to get them white white. Whereas in an electric oven, you can have the temperature just that little bit lower. And although it takes longer to cook them, you can get them white white. To be honest, I'm not bothered about perfect white meringues. So I'm going to put this tray above and those underneath, and this tray will help stop those discolour anymore. I disturbed dear old Tess, who was sleeping in front of the Arca. She's had to move um, when I was getting those trays out. Bless her. Right, my meringues have been in the oven for an hour and 40 minutes. And to see whether they're ready, you just want to get one carefully <laughs> and see if you can lift it off the paper. And if it comes off, they're done. I believe that it's important not to overcook meringues because you don't want them to be like um, eating sort of, I don't know, polystyrene, something like that. So as soon as you can lift them up and they come off the paper easily, you know that they are done and they still should have a little bit of goo about them, which is what I like. If you like them more cooked, then leave them in slightly longer, but I think, these are spot on and I'm just going to check. Sorry, the dogs are doing circuits around me. It's because I've disturbed them all because they were all asleep in front of the Arca and I had to open the door. And so now they're on the move. And these are done as well. Oh, they're so good. In fact, I'm going to try a little one. Mm. Mm, 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 mm. So delicious. Right. Excuse me, morning. Come on, put me that way. So you can either leave them to cool in the tray or you can just lift them up and pop them onto a wire rack. You want them to be fully cooled before you pop them in um, a cake tin or a Tupperware or something like that. An airtight container is what you want to store them in. And they are delicious. So there we are. How to make meringues. It is easier getting them off um, 
baking paper, greaseproof paper, but it is Baker Glide, but I like to be as reusable as possible. Let's put these down. That one is slightly wedged. It's not wanting to shift at the moment. You can see there's a little bit of goo and I like the goo. I don't like an over, an overcooked meringue, shop-bought ones. I just find are a bit, um, you need to have, like these you can eat on their own, but I think if you have <clears throat> a shop-bought one, um, they're quite dry, you need to have them with fruit and cream and things like this, where I, I, was, would, I would quite happily eat all of these. Um, I know, that <laughs> would be an awful lot of sugar. Um, that one is slightly stuck. That one's a reject. That one I'm going to eat. Um, but there we have it. And then to serve these, so many different ways. So versatile. You could, um, well, the little tiny ones, I'm actually planning to decorate the top of a trifle with those. The bigger ones, you could um, whip some cream, pop the cream in, stick them together like that. You could um, serve them, you know, you could crumble them up and make an eaten mess. You could serve them with fruit or all sorts of things. Um, but I actually find for like a children's party, just a bowl full of meringues is, is really, really lovely. So I do hope that you have found my meringue tutorial helpful. Don't waste your egg whites. Freeze them or make them into meringues or something else. Um, but don't, don't let them go to waste because there is no need. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you on Friday with my weekly vlog. And until then, sending lots of love. Make you notice that our love's about. Oh, you hear